Hi, I'm Paul Graziani, and I'm CEO of Analytical Graphics, and I'm here to talk to you today about how the AGI products and ANSYS products fit together. So, as you probably know, ANSYS products really start at a chip level and then model at up to a component level, like think circuit board for instance, to subsystem and system level. So, pervasive engineering simulation across that stack. At AGI, we start at the systems level and then move up to the systems of systems level. And then we model design trades in those levels against the mission. So how do those design trades affect mission effectiveness? So here's a video that our co-CRO, Kevin Flood, did that illustrates this. Within the engineering enterprise, mission level problems are broken down into executable pieces, component development, subsystem integration, and system integration. In use, these complex systems come together in a system of systems architecture. They must operate in a coordinated way across multiple domains and achieve the desired mission outcome. Digital engineering connects all the digital models from components to the system of systems architecture and successfully evaluates operational outcomes which are the true measures of success. Okay, so here's a simple example. Let's take a chip. Let's say it's a sensor chip. Sensor chip lives on a circuit board. Circuit board lives in a subsystem, the, the sensor subsystem. That whole thing lives inside of a spacecraft. So let's, uh, let's draw a spacecraft with solar panels, a bus, and an optical assembly. And that spacecraft is taking images of targets on the ground. And so let's say that it's taking an image there, and then later on, it's gonna reorient, take an image there, later on, it's gonna reorient, take an image there. So as that happens, you'll see the spacecraft will, will change orientation to collect and point towards the target. Now, let's not forget about this giant fusion ball here called the sun, and the sun radiates energy, and that energy bounces off targets, goes up in their barrel, heating up the sensor. The energy also hits the spacecraft, but it hits different parts of the spacecraft depending on where the spacecraft is pointing. So there, here it hits the back of the spacecraft, here it hits the sides of the spacecraft, and over here it's hitting the front of the spacecraft. So here you can see how the mission, the specific mission, affects the thermal load on the spacecraft. So let's take a look at this in SDK. An engineer can take the lighting conditions determined in SDK back to ANSYS products, which can then model the thermal loading on the system all the way through the spacecraft down to the chip level. With, let's say it's a sensor chip that we're looking at, for example, we can determine how that heating will affect the performance on the chip, and is that performance sufficient to satisfy the collection planning that this particular system needs to do to meet its mission. Will it get too hot? Will it need a different sized heat sink? So with the mission now as part of the simulation trade space, we can find that out. Uh, let's consider another domain, RF. In this example, let's uh, try to figure out whether or not the satellite's downlink antenna, the contemplated design for that antenna, will that be able to provide enough bandwidth to download the imagery given the dynamic geometries of the spacecraft relative to the ground station. So the spacecraft geometry changing orientation, the antenna is going to be pointed in different ways relative to the ground station, and can that particular antenna provide enough bandwidth to the communication system such that the onboard storage of the imagery can be cleared fast enough such that the spacecraft is ready for the next image collection window. Can this particular antenna actually do that? And again, this spacecraft is not operating alone. Typically, these will operate in some kind of constellations. In this example, this might be a single spacecraft in a constellation of hundreds or even thousands of spacecraft. And then that presents other things that have to be analyzed to understand how well this antenna is going to perform. So you'll have, for instance, a kind of cross interference from these other spacecraft. So there are so many of these interactions that need to be analyzed to understand 
how the design trades, in this case the antenna, affect mission. So we could keep going all day long on these examples across all the different levels and through all the different engineering disciplines. This technology stack allows pervasive engineering simulation to be done from the chip level all the way up to the system of systems level and to have that entire stack, all the design trades made across that entire stack to be measured against the critical metric of mission effectiveness. That's where the magic happens.